Jerzy Stradawa was a Polish man in his early 30s who immigrated from Poland to Aberdeer in the Keenon Valley of South Wales in the United Kingdom following the conclusion of the Second World War. He was known to his neighbours and friends as George and worked at Ter Herbert Colliery in Heawine. Whilst working at the mine, he secured lodging at a miner's hostel, which was located within close proximity of the colliery. He had been there since July of 1947, after having trained at the Oakdale Centre following demobilisation six months earlier at a Polish camp in Kinross, Scotland. He reportedly served under General Anders in Italy during the Second World War. Some viewed him as a lone wolf and had a very small circle of friends. He was said to be a quiet man with a smile for everyone. It was Monday the 19th of April 1948 at approximately 6pm when Jerzy departed from the miners' hostel to go for an evening walk, passing through Aberdeer Park. Tragically, this decision would lead him to his death. Jerzy was suddenly attacked and was stabbed 44 times, all above the waist, according to the forensic pathologist who examined his body. It was determined that three of the stab wounds penetrated his body and the pole had defensive wounds on his hands and arms. His throat had also been slit by what was thought to have been a six-inch double-edged knife or dagger, Jerzy had been robbed of a silver Swiss-made wristwatch which was absent of a strap and between 20 and 30 pounds in cash which police believed would have been bloodstained and his body had been abandoned within a cluster of rhododendrons. His body was discovered by three schoolboys who had at the time been trying to aid a lame bird which had fallen from the sky. Once they realised what they had seen, the boys bolted to the coroner's home nearby and raised the alarm. The case received a lot of media attention, more so after the appointment of Robert Honey Bob Fabian, who was Chief Inspector at Scotland Yard. He had become known for solving an infamous murder, that of Alec de Antiquis, an ex-home guard corporal who owned a motorcycle repair shop and was fatally shot in a jewellery robbery gone wrong. The robbery was carried out by three men, and it seemed impossible to determine which of the men was responsible for the killing of Alec. Controversially, two of the three were hanged and the third was imprisoned. Solving the case eventually led to the abolition of the death penalty in the UK. Fabian highly praised the local police for their efforts in and around Aberdeer. The suspect was described as a short and thick-set man aged in his late 20s. However, despite questioning the residents, the man was never identified. Jerzy did not have any known enemies and it is unknown whether he knew his killer. There was a lot of blood lost and police were baffled as to how a person could have wandered around the town drenched in blood with nobody taking any notice. Did he perhaps have help from an accomplice? Did he wait until darkness fell? What was his motive for murdering him? A local rumour suggested Nazi involvement and another Polish man was responsible for the murder, but this is merely rumour. A man reported seeing Jerzy between 7.30pm and 8pm that evening, alone. He went on to state, At the top end of the park, a man was waiting for Stradawa who went over to speak to him. They spoke in a foreign tongue and they appeared to be speaking quite friendly. This man was about 24, shorter and fuller than Stradawa. He was wearing a blue pinstriped suit and was clean shaven. He appeared to be of Polish nationality, and I would recognise him again if I saw him. 
There had been a storm on the evening of the 19th of April 1948 and detectives believed that crucial evidence was unfortunately destroyed during that time. A coroner's inquest returned a verdict of murder by person or persons unknown. The area was closely inspected, with a rusty knife being recovered from flower beds in the park. However, according to authorities, the condition of the knife suggested it was too weather-beaten to have been the murder weapon. Discarded clothes, more specifically trousers and a waistcoat, were found by the colliery, but the clothing was said to have been in too good of a condition to have belonged to a killer. Interestingly, bloodstained banknotes were found, however it was difficult at the time to determine whether the blood was that of Yerzy, his killer, or that of animals which had been slaughtered at the local butcher's shop as money passed through various hands. The notes were sent away to be examined and tested, however, frustratingly, there is no record of the results. Yerzy Stradawa's funeral took place at St. Therese Church, with the streets lined with locals paying their final respects. Yerzy was seen as a man of quiet disposition, did not drink or smoke, and lived a seemingly ordinary life. Despite having retrieved over 600 statements, police struggled to find answers. Only a handful of statements could be taken from lodgers at the miner's hostel, as most of them could not speak English. The murder weapon was never found, and mystery remains as to who was responsible for his death. The murder of Yerzy Stradawa remains unsolved to this day. Hello everybody, um, thank you for sticking around until the end of the video, this is just a quick message to say thank you all so much for supporting the channel this year. Um, 2021's not been the easiest, however I want to express my sincerest gratitude to everyone who has watched, commented, liked, subscribed and shared, become channel members etc. Um, Unfortunately, I haven't been able to create content as much as I had wished to this year. However, going into the new year, I'm going to try and figure out a way to balance my personal life and YouTube life. Uh, for those who may not know, I'm currently in my second year of a university degree and the workload can be quite heavy. So I hope you understand why I've not had as much content out, especially in the last couple of months. I hope all of you have had a really wonderful festive season and I want to wish you all the best for 2022.